Shocks are often a hot topic here in the shop. Today we're talking about several different kinds and which one is the best for your rig. Regularly we talk about shocks here in the shop. Oftentimes they seem like a status symbol for a lot of people, but ultimately choosing the right shock for you is a really important decision. When you boil it down, many of the shocks that we talk about can be dissolved into essentially three different categories. Uh, basic monotube shocks, basic twin tube shocks, and reservoir monotube shocks. Now the shocks we're talking about are not race application Baja 1000 shocks. We're talking about shocks that would be on your daily driver slash weekend wheeler trail rig. So we've got three Jeeps lined up in the shop today. This first Jeep is an LJ and it's got twin tube shocks on it. This second Jeep has monotube reservoir shocks on it. And the last Jeep here has just standard monotube shocks. Now shocks are an important part of every vehicle. Shocks play a crucial role in controlling what is otherwise an uncontrollable spring. What they do is they actually convert motion energy into heat energy. So let's start off and talk about why twin tube shocks are important. The Jeep that I'm currently under is an LJ that we built for my dad a couple years ago. If you wanna watch that entire video, check it out on our YouTube page because it's a really cool transformation from a parking lot rat into something that he wheels regularly and enjoys driving on the street. We've got it equipped with a long arm suspension. It's actually an old school Rubicon Express long arm kit that was already on the Jeep. We added a few metal cloak components to it including their Rock Sport shocks. Now their Rock Sport shocks are a twin tube shock. They chose to utilize a twin tube shock because twin tube shocks generally have the most amount of travel and have the best ride quality in a shock without adding an external reservoir. Twin tube shocks are just that. It's two tubes inside one another. And so the fluid travels not only through the piston valving, but through the end stack valving and into the outer chamber. Twin tubes are actually pretty robust too because they could take a dent on the actual body of the shock and keep working. Now, that may seem like the ideal shock, but for some, there are definitely some downfalls. If you've got a twin tube shock and you use it at a high rate of speed, what can happen is called cavitation. And when that happens, the working capacity of that shock can be diminished by actually 50% because the fluid that is in that shock gets to foaming and churning and is not working like you want it to work. The Jeep behind me is a JK and it's got a Fox monotube shock on it. This shock is a non-reservoir shock that simply has one tube. The tube is called a monotube because literally there's a piston inside there that is traveling up and down inside this tube. Now what's unique about a monotube shock is that so it doesn't cavitate, it has a separate floating piston. And on the other side of that floating piston is a gas charge area. So this shock is perfect for people that do a lot of high speed off-road driving where that shock is traveling in and out very, very frequently. The downfall of a twin tube shock is that under those conditions, the shock's gonna cavitate and fade and lose control. With this monotube shock at high speed driving, you will still continue to have that same precise control that you expect. One thing that's really cool about a monotube shock also is because it has that floating piston, it's an additional cushion, if you will, on big hits. So if you're doing a lot of high speed driving and you want a shock that has precision control, a monotube is a great choice. Now, where the downfall is, this shock may ride a little bit firmer and it definitely will not have the same travel as a twin tube shock assuming that the bodies are the same diameter and length. 
because it's got that floating piston inside there. So if you're gonna do a lot of high speed, a lot of off-road driving, the monotube is a great choice. The last Jeep that we're gonna talk about is another JK. This JK has been in the shop for a lot of work. Not only have we done the suspension work, but we've also swapped in these massive eight lug full float Dana 60s. You'll see it's got these monotube remote reservoir king shocks. These are a really nice shock because they offer a lot of features. Not only is it a monotube, so you can handle all of the high speed driving without cavitation, but it has a reservoir. And so with this reservoir, the floating piston is moved from the body of the shock into the reservoir. This gives us the travel of a twin tube shock with the dampening characteristics of a monotube shock. I really also like this shock because you can definitely customize it more than you can do with just a standard sealed twin tube shock. With this shock, they are fully serviceable. So if you want your shock valving changed to your specific driving conditions and vehicle weight, that can happen. And there are many different shock suppliers and builders throughout the country that will professionally build your shock and the valve stack inside it to exactly what you need. It's a really neat service. Generally, these shocks take a fair amount of service, and so it's important to make sure you stay up on the service maintenance for these things by changing the fluid in them. Fox states that strictly off-road use shocks should be serviced every 10,000 miles. Well, that may seem extreme to some, but to maintain the exact handling characteristics that you're demanding out of this high-end shock, it's important to follow those guidelines. One other feature that's pretty neat is these shocks have an adjuster here built into the bottom. So you can change your valving basically on the fly and you can get the shock to react a little bit differently depending on exactly how you're driving. Now, like we've talked about, there are many different shocks and several different applications which may be right for you. The last reason that you wanna pick shocks is for how they look. Make sure you're picking shocks that are appropriate for how you're using your vehicle. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to us and follow us on all of our social platforms. We're creating reels and shorts. We're on TikTok and Instagram all over the place showing you what happens here in the shop every single day. Also, check out our events page and join us for a trail ride at our local off-road parks. Thanks for watching, see you on the next video.